Hello, good evening. We are starting the week number three. In this uh, week, we are going to have four more sessions. And at the end of this uh, week and these four sessions, we're going to have just one more week and we're um, going to end the course. We are going to end the module. So we are just going to have one more week uh, after this one. And we are going to complete this process. You know that you have um, to go through uh, another process, but in this case, we are going to end this process uh, this week. So we are going to uh, begin with the week number three, that is this one. Uh, we are going to work in the platform also. We are going to complete section number four because that is the one uh, that we are using for this week. But you know that um, if you want to complete all the activities on the platform, you can do it. And you are not uh, waiting for the explanation of the topics. You can work on those exercises by yourself and then you can like just listen and understand and practice all the information and that I have for you for all the topics that we have on the platform. For this week, we are going to talk about a topic that uh, is left from the previous week. Um, and also we are going to listen to the, uh, the information that we have in the intro video for the section number four, you know that we were like doing that with the other um, sections in which we were uh, seeing, uh, listening, understanding all the information, all the, uh, the things that they share with us on the intro video in which we have the information for the topics that we are going to develop through the section. So in that case, you can rewatch all the videos, all the intro videos that we have on the platform when you complete the sections, because in that case, you're going to understand better what is the information that they are like um, giving on the videos, because in the first um, section, we were like seeing um, a video in which they were talking about some problems that they have on a hotel. And in that case, we were talking about solving problems, talking about problems. And in the intro video, we have that information. Then in the second one, we were talking about like pollution, um, problems with nature. Um, we were talking about some a specific topic related to um, the earth and all of the things. And we were talking about that because we were talking about problems and solutions, but related to uh, that topic. In the section number three, we were like um, listening about the techniques that people use to learn how to dance. And in that case, they were like explaining, sharing, giving extra information about the techniques that they use and why they are like learning how to dance and a specific um, kind of, of dancing. And in that case, we were talking about the, um, the techniques that we use to talk about or to practice English. And also we were like um, learning more about um, that techniques. And also we were like uh, thinking about our process and the things that we uh, did, that we do, and maybe we are going to do in the future to continue with this process, because you know that this is not something from one day to another. We know that there are people like, are very, very good with the second languages or with other languages, and they have like this facility to learn um, a lot about the, the languages, but, but also we know that there are a lot of people that uh, have some troubles understanding some parts of the, of the language. And that's why we were talking about the techniques that we use to learn English and to practice English. And you were sharing 
all the techniques, all the information that you use to um, learn English and also to practice with other people or watching TV, uh, listening some music, reading some books and all of that things. So in this, uh, in this week, we are going to see the intro video for the section number four. Uh, we are going to develop the exercises that we have there, like the um, knowledge check, the listening activities or the reading activities, if we have reading activities. And also we are going to do all the exercises that we have in section four. Um, I know that maybe some of you um, are already completed the, uh, the platform, but we're going to do it just to, to see what are the exercises that we have there and also um, what are the, the answer for those exercises. And also we are going to help some of, of you that uh, are not able to work on the platform because of your job or something like that. So we're going to do it just to help each other to complete the, uh, the platform. Because you know that this week you need to complete for the last day in the section number four. And uh, we are going to have just one week more and you need to complete the, pl the platform for the next week. So if you are not working on the platform, uh, you can do it in these days because you're going to have a little or short time to complete all the activities there and you are not going to have enough time to complete all the, the sections and all of the activities. Um, on the platform, so you need to do it um, slowly, step by step and exercise by exercise. But this is just like uh, something to remember that you need to work on the platform because we are going to have just um, this week, these four days, uh, almost three days in the next week and we are going to end with uh, this course. So after all that information, after all that things, uh, we are going to begin and we have uh, on the screen the phrase for this week because we are beginning the next week. So I have an image or a phrase for you. This said tomorrow is going to be the best day ever. In this phrase, we're going to say it every single day. Uh, in some cases, we have like very hard time uh, because we have a lot of things to do. We have um, a lot of activities to complete during the day. Uh, we are tired, we are um, angry, maybe we are frustrated, or we have some, uh, some things that is not good in our lives, but we are going to keep uh, fighting to complete all the activities and to be happy. That is the main goal of our lives. That is to be happy with ourselves and the things we do and also the things we did. Because in that case, we cannot change the past, but we can work on the present and also we can work in our uh, future. So in this case, we are going to use this phrase for every day. We are going to tell this phrase in the morning and we're going to say, or we can say it uh, at night when we are going to go to bed because we're going to uh, have this affirmation for our next day. Tomorrow is going to be the best day ever. And you're not going to focus on bad things. You're going to focus on good things. And we're going to do things better the next day. So this is the phrase for the week number three. And we are going to begin with the section, I mean, the session number one of this week number three. Uh, the last week we have this topic uh, left in this case. Uh, we were not talking about this one. So we are going to talk about gerunds. Uh, we are going to make like... Um, we're going to make like a review and we're going to um, we're going to have a, a information, a lot of information about the gerunds, the structure, the uses and all of the things. 
and because we have this uh, topic and it is very important that we uh, keep learning about the gerunds because this is one of the most used structures in English. So we are going to begin talking about the gerunds, some uh, specific information about the gerunds. We are going to talk about the different kinds uh, of gerund. Uh, we're going to see some examples. Then we're going to have a short activity. This, this topic is not like very long. It's a short topic in which you're going to um, have general information. We are not like uh, have a lot of information. We are going to have a specific information about the gerunds and we are going to understand better this topic. And then we are going to have like a short exercise and then we are going to uh, continue with the other things that we are going to perform in this uh, session. So we're going to begin with gerunds. We are going to um, talk about what is gerunds or what are the gerunds. And then we are going to talk about the different kind of gerunds that we have and, and how can we use them? Uh, what are the elements that they have? So the topic is gerunds. And in this case, we have information that it says, gerunds are the ing forms of verbs that are functioning as nouns in a sentence. So in this case, we are using the gerunds as nouns, um, but they uh, show action or a state of being. And we have like an example in said, action can be shown with the gerunds hiking, a swimming or a studying, a state of being can similarly be demonstrated by gerunds like refreshing or amusing. So in this case, we are like um, showing some action and also a states of being using the ing form of the, uh, the words. In this case, if the ing form of the verb. So we have some information here. And this, this topic is not like they are very um, different from the topics that we have in Spanish because um, I know that you remember that in Spanish, uh, we have this topic also when we are like studying in school because we have in lenguaje, the, the subject, um, we have the, the El gerundio, we study gerunds. And in that moment, they explain how to use the gerund and what is the meaning, because in Spanish we have yendo, ando. So in that case, it's the same thing that we learn in that subject that we are applying into English because they have the same meaning. And we are like uh, using that uh, information. So in that case, when we pay attention to this, to some a grammatical explanation or same explanation in grammar topics in Spanish, we can find that those topics that we learn in Spanish can help us understand better um, some topics in, in, in English because they have the same structure, but in a different language. But in this case, it is, uh, we have like an explanation in Spanish about this topic too. So it is not like something that we didn't know anything about.
So then it says that gerunds also appear in gerund phrases which combine the gerund with other words that, that add additional information. For example, the phrase a sprinting across the field is a gerund phrase and both gerund and gerund phrase work the same way and have four variations in regard to how the, they function within a sentence. Subject of the sentence, direct object of the sentence, subject complement, and object of a preposition. At the beginning, we were like saying that we have um, these gerunds that uh, show like the action uh, of the, the things that we are doing and also like they are um, a noun, we can say. And it says that they, they can function as a noun, but in this case, we are saying that we have four different um, variations of the gerunds, and we have uh, the number one is the subject of the sentence, number two, direct object of the sentence, number three, the subject complement, and number four, an object of a preposition. So in this case, we are going to see what are the four variation of the gerunds and gerund uh, phrases? And also, uh, what are they? Because we need to know what are they and what are the uses and the function that they have. So in this case, we are going to see four different variations and we are going to learn one by one. So let's continue with this part. So we have here number one, subject of the sentence. Number two, direct object of the sentence. Number three, subject complement. In number four, so uh, an object of a preposition. So we're going to see the different kind of gerunds that we have here. 
So we are going to explain it one by one and we are going to see the elements that they have. So we are going to part from this that are the different kind of gerunds. And we have number one, that is gerund as the subject of the sentence. And in this case, it says that gerunds can take on the role of the subject of a sentence. As the name said, in this case, the gerund is taking the place or taking uh, the role of the subject of the sentence. And we have like two examples. We have number one. And it says bedtime is my February time of day. Bedtime is my favorite. time of day. In this case, you can see in this sentence that we don't have a gerund because in that case, we are not using um, words with ing. So in this case, you are not using the gerund. So we have here, no gerund. Bedtime is my favorite time of a day. And uh, we're saying that we like to sleep or sleeping is our favorite activity of the day. So in that case, we are going to change that same phrase and we're going to add another word. In this case, we are going to use the gerund as the subject. So in this case, we're saying that we are going to write the, uh, the gerund at the beginning of the sentence. In this case, we are going to change and we're going to say sleeping. In this case, we have the ing sleeping, and then we're going to add the complement of this sentence. Is my favorite activity, is my favorite activity. So in this case, we are using the gerund at the beginning. So it's different from the first one in which we don't have any word with ing from the second one in which we have a, the first word of the sentence with the ing or the gerund. In a, that case, our subject or like the, the word that is functioning as the subject of the sentence is sleeping. Sleeping is my favorite activity. So in that case, they are functioning as the subject of the sentence. Sleeping in the second sentence is a gerund that works as the subject of the sentence. And that's the uh, information that we have. So in that case, it's very easy to understand that in that case, we have the ing as the, um, the subject. So let's see another example. We have board games are a great way to spend an evening. Board game are a great way to spend an evening. So in this one, we don't have a gerund because we don't have any word with ing or with a, that is structure. So. We're going to change that and we're going to make it with the gerund as the subject of the sentence. In that case, playing is going to function as 
the subject of the sentence, playing. Playing board games is a great way to spend an evening. So in this case, we have the gerund. So we have different examples in which we are applying the ing or the gerund as the subject of the sentence at the beginning of the sentence. And we are using a, two different sentences which we can say the difference that we can make using the gerund as the subject. So in this case, in the second example of playing board games, um, we have added a gerund phrase to replace the original subject of the sentence. Playing is the gerund and um, board games adds additional clarifying information. Gerunds are useful ways to add a specific concrete information to your writing that will allow you readers to better understand the points or idea that you are describing. So in this case, we're saying that it's necessary that we can use the gerunds in different forms. Uh, and also that's why we are like um, studying gerunds right now, because when you are going to write something, you need a, add a specific concrete information to your writing and the people that is reading your information is going to be very clear with the things that you are describing. So that's why you need to pay attention to the gerunds and how to use them and the different ways that we can use the gerunds. So in this case, we are like uh, going to have a, uh, short detail about the use of the urine. So that's the like the extra information that we have about the gerunds. Then we have the second one. And this is gerunds as the direct object of the sentence. We were talking about the gerund as the subject. Now we are going to talk about gerunds as the direct object of the sentence. So, and in this case, we have that gerunds can work as direct objects in a sentence. Direct objects are words or phrases that receive the action performed by the verb. In this case, it, we are saying that the direct objects are the ones or the words or phrases that receive the action that is performed by the verb. So in this case, we are going to use it in that way.
So in this case, we have two examples. And we're going to see the difference of those examples that we have there. In the first one, we are not going to use the gerund, And in the second one, we are going to apply the gerund form. So in the first one, we have my dog likes naps. My dog likes naps. In that case, we are not using the gerund. So in this case, I mean, we are going to change a little bit of things. And we are going to change that phrase. My dog likes napping. My dog likes napping. So in this case, we are using the ing form of this verb uh, as the object or the, yes, this is the, the, the direct object of the sentence. And we are using it as at the end of the sentence. Now it's not at the beginning. This one is at the end. And it says that in the second sentence, the gerund napping, tell us what the dog likes. Napping received the action of likes. What does the dog like? The dog likes napping. So in that case, we are like putting the information or the action um, that is like and then napping. So in that case, we know that we are using it as the direct object of the sentence. Then, in this case, it is not like we're going to stop uh, for a long time talking about the direct uh, object of the sentence because you understand what is the, uh, the way in which we're going to write the gerund. In this case, you don't need to have your verb and then you're going to add your object that is the, the things that the subject likes to do or is doing. So in that case, we have this information. Then we're going to see number three. Let me move this one from here. So number three. I mean, I have, uh, yes. Two more examples. Let me put the examples and then we're going to see number three. We have another sentence without gerund and it says, my mom prefers classic noir films. My mom prefers classic noir films. And then we are going to change the things a little bit. My mom prefers, my mom is our subject. The action prefers. What my mom prefers, watching, in this case, we're going to use the ING, watching classic noir films. In that case, we are like talking about the things that she prefers. So in that case, watching, Classic Neuer films. So in this case, we have the direct object complement of the sentence. And in the second sentence, we have add a gerund to make classic Neuer films into a complete gerund phrase. And again, we have included a more specific detail about what in particular my mom prefers. That is watching. That is the thing that my mom prefers to do. Then we have number three, gerund as the subject complement. Gerund as the subject complement. Number four. 
Gerund may also function as subject complements in sentence. Subject complements are words or phrases that rename the subject of the sentence or describe it with more details. In this case, we can do two different things with the complement or the subject complement, that is the number one, um, that is to rename the subject or two, that is to describe it with more details. So in that case, we can add more details to the subject using the gerund or the ing form. So let's see what are the examples that we have for this uh, information. And we have here the example number one. And you know that we are using a not gerund in the first one and it says, the exam was difficult. The exam was difficult. That is a simple sentence, but we are not using gerund. So in this case, we need to change that because we're using the ING form. So in this case, the exam was frustrating. And here we are, I mean, we are using the gerund. And it says both difficult and frustrating work as subject complements. They tell, um, they tell us that the exam was, in this case, difficult and frustrating. While these two words may seem interchangeable, frustrating gives reader a more specific idea or mental image why difficult can be unclear. So in this case, uh, both of these words, uh, difficult and uh, frustrating, um, are functioning as the complement of, uh, of the subject. In this case, they are telling us um, how was the exam. But difficult is like, it was difficult, but not impossible. It was difficult, but funny. It was difficult and tiring or something like that. But when you are telling someone that it was frustrating, you know that it's not something good, it's something bad because maybe you feel bad during the exam. It was kind of hard. It was um, like kind of heavy because it have a lot of uh, exercises. Um, and in that case, it's more specific the way that, that you are like expressing um, your ideas about the exam. So in that case, we are going to use more specific words to explain um, how was the things uh, doing in that case. So frustrating is more specific in this case. Then we have another example. And this one said, the climb up the hill was a challenge. The climb up the hill was a challenge. And in this case, we are not using a year. 
And then we're going to change that. The climb up the heels. Was in this case challenging to finish. Challenging to finish. So here we have and it says that we replace a challenge with its German phrase equivalent as the subject complement of this sentence. We don't know what is specifically was challenging about the claim. The thing that was challenging is not the action of climbing, is to finish the, uh, the action to claim up. So in that case, we are sure what was the must like challenging part of this, uh, this activity. So then we have number four, that is the last one. Number four. And in this case, it's talking about gerund as the object of a preposition. In this case, we are not talking about a subject. We are not talking about verbs. We are not talking about anything of that. We are talking about gerund as the object of a preposition. And in this case, finally, gerunds can be the object of a preposition. A preposition, we know that this one is a word of word phrase used before nouns or noun phrase to describe qualities such as direction, location, time, or a spatial position. And an object of a preposition is the word that comes after the preposition and describes the who, what, when, why, or how of that preposition. Prepositions can be difficult to learn, so um, you can keep working on that topic because we have a lot of information about the prepositions too. So we have the examples.
And we have here the number one. I have to go home after my workout. I have to go home after my workout. That is the phrase that we have. And then we're going to change that phrase. And we have, I have to go home after, and then we're going to add the gerund. I have to go home after exercising. So in this case, in the second sentence, the year and exercising help tell us when specifically I will go home. When I will go home or when will I go home after exercising? So in that case, it's uh, making like an specification about the time in which we are going to go home. Then we have another one. But in this case, it's not related to the four uh, parts that we have here about the gerunds. In this case, it's like, it, it's called downlink gerunds. And in this case, it says that when using gerunds, we can run into trouble with downlink gerunds, also known as downlink modifiers. Uh, they are like some information related to some words in which we can have like a kind of troubles if we don't pay attention to them. But in this case, I will add this information to the document in which you are going to have like extra information from the, the things that I have for you. Because in this case, we need to, to continue with uh, the topic. So in this case, it's saying that um, we have three different words, uh, I mean, two different sentences. In the first one, it says, while playing video games, my mom's side dinner was ready. In that case, it's a downlink gerund. And we can use it like this way. While playing video games, I heard my mom say dinner was ready. In the first sentence is confusing. And this confusion is created because the noun phrase, my mom, follows the gerund phrase while playing video games. It makes it sound like my mom is the one play, playing video games, not me. In that case, it's like making confusion of the people that is doing something or who is performing the action. But we know something about this one. So I'm going to um, write eight sentences, just sent eight sentences for the exercise and it is like um, with the examples because you know that in the first example we don't have the gerund and we need to like uh, fix that sentence and we need to add the gerund. So I'm going to write the phrases without gerund and I will give you a time to correct that sentences. Remember that in this case, we have different options to correct those sentences, but I will uh, give you my uh, corrections. But in that case, I will give you time to correct the sentences and then we are going to talk about the corrections. So we're going to see exercise and we're going to see what are the sentences. Nobody around here helps out with the course. Nobody around So you need to fix those sentences. My brother was a mayor. Irritation today. Number three, a run is the best way to start my morning.
She enjoys her look. So, I mean, she enjoys her box. Number five, two of my favorite activities to do in the summer are swim and surf. I mean, enjoys. Number six, I am the words at sport. Number seven, he is nice. And the last one, number eight. Yes. Number eight, I like food. So remember that you have four different ways in which you can use the gerunds. You can use it as the subject of the sentence. You can use it as the direct object of the sentence. You can use also the gerund as the subject complement and as the object of a preposition. So you have four different options in which you can correct those sentences. I will give you five minutes and you can share your uh, sentence. And I'm going to see what are the sentences that are like uh, the ones that I have. And we're going to write the correction that I have for you. So five minutes to read the sentence, to correct them using the different ways to use the gerunds. And then we're going to see what are the corrections that I have. So five minutes from now.
Okay, I think that we don't have more time. So I'm going to um, write the corrections that I have for these sentences. And you can see the ones that you have and what are the corrections that you uh, did to the sentence. So I'm going to write it, uh, I mean, in another short list like this one. And you can see what are the corrections that you have and the ones that I have. So like make like a comparison of the corrections. So for the first one, nobody around here helps out with the course. I have nobody, nobody around here. Doing the chart. Tell me. Doing the chart. Mm -hmm. Doing the chart. Yeah. You can you can write it like doing and also, but that's why I'm saying you, you need to make like the comparisons and that is uh, correct also. So I have this one and you have doing, that is uh, a good thing. So it uh, helps out with the cleaning. You can do it like this. And also you can do it like helping or doing the course. To have different, different ways to write these uh, sentences. Then number two, my brother was a major irritation today. My brother was irritating today. My brother was irritating today. Number three, running is the best way to start my morning. Number four, she enjoys reading. Then we have a swimming and surfing. Are two of my favorite activities to do in the summer. I am the worst at playing baseball. Because in that case, do like uh, talking about sports, but in this case, we are like to make uh, something very specific. Then he is, in this case, um, In this case, it says nice. We're going to change the word nice. And we're going to say is charming. He is charming. And number eight, I like watching, watching people cook and then eating all the delicious, In this case, we are like making kind of long food after because we're explaining that we like uh, food and something like that. So in that case, we have the corrections there. And also we're going to end the session here and we're going to see each other tomorrow in session number two. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night.